Okay, in this section of real estate appreciation, we're gonna be going over cash flow versus growth. Now, if you haven't watched our previous video on how appreciation works, I definitely encourage you to watch it just so you have the basics. But without any further ado, let's get right into why we're making this video. So there's five ways to make profit in real estate. We've got appreciation, we've got cash flow, tax advantages, massive income opportunities, and leverage, right? So we're talking about the relationship between appreciation and cash flow. And this is a very important relationship because most people want cash flow and they're very afraid of their home value going down or their home value not going up as much as they would hope that it would go up to. But I want to show you how you can actually project these numbers over time. Okay, so to understand how appreciation and cash flow works, right, we understand that if we have a home's value, right, let's just say the market is perfectly priced at this point in time. We believe that rent is fair compared to the price of housing, right? So the price of housing does this, right? And at the end of the year, it lands about right here. Well, if we had a rental agreement with a tenant, right? And let's just say we agreed that they would pay five K in rent, right? Well, we see that the value of this home is much greater than where we determined that a fair rental price would be. And let's say that this was a $100,000 home, where we said it's fair to rent a $100,000 home for five thousand essentially $5,000. Let's say now the home is valued at $110,000, right? So this means that right here we have a 5%, right? Because $5,000 divided by $100,000 gives us 5%. Well, if we take 5K and divide it by 110, we will get somewhere very close to 4.5%. So what do we have to do? Well, we now have to increase the price of rent to match the growth. But the problem with that is then home prices are, again, gonna do whatever they do and they're gonna go up in value and rent's gonna stay the same for a year. So at times, right, the rental market may seem way more favorable, but in the long run, right, high markets of, sorry, markets of high growth are going to be way less cash flow favorable to markets with slower growth because of the lag effect, right? There is a lag between rental growth and actual home values. So understand that home values are determined by supply and demand and rent is pretty, or cash flow is pretty much determined by the rental market, which is gonna lag behind growth. So if you are buying a home in a high growth market, it might seem riskier because it takes more cash flow in order to essentially re regain your capital investment, right? That means that if your home value were to be 100,000 when you purchase it and you can get 5K in cash flow, or you can buy somewhere else and the uh, purchase price is 50K, but it produces 5K in cash flow, right? One of these, right, is gonna be 5%, and one of these is gonna equal 10%, okay? The one with 10%, if we take one divided by 0.10, we get 10 years. And if we take one divided by 0 0.05, we get 20 years. So the property with the higher growth rate is typically gonna produce 
less cash flow that's going to allow us to regain our investment back. Now, this is an oversimplification using no loans, but I do want to show you that, yes, there is a reason why people do prefer cash flow if they are risk adverse. Make sure you stick around and watch part two of this video as I actually compare with real numbers over 20 years, what is a growth property look like in a market of high appreciation and low cash flow, and what is its future value gonna look like in 20 years versus the cash flow portfolio where we purchase in a you know very uh, economically deprived area, produce a lot of good cash flow, but see very little appreciation. Appreciate you for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below what we can do to make these videos better.